Henry Lux was a, a sort of poor black tobacco farmer who grew up in Southern Virginia. And in 1951, she was diagnosed with cervical cancer. Um, at that point, she had moved up to Baltimore and she went to Johns Hopkins for treatment um, because it was the only place anywhere near her that treated black patients. So this was the era of segregation and the hospitals had the quote unquote colored wards, which was the only place that black patients or poor patients could be seen. And without telling her before treating her tumor, her doctor just cut a little piece and put it in a dish. And he sent that down the hall to George Guy, who was the head of tissue culture research at Hopkins. And George Guy had been trying to grow human cells outside of the body for decades, and it had never worked. And for reasons that remained a mystery, Henrietta cells just never died. So they started doubling their numbers every 24 hours. Uh, they went from like one dish to two to four to eight to 16, and then just sort of pretty quickly took over the lab. And George Guy started calling his colleagues and saying, I think I have the first immortal human cell line, which is what they're called which means they'll just grow and divide forever. And in response, his colleagues all said, great, can we have some? Um, because there'd been this enormous effort to grow cells outside the body for a hundred years, um, because we just we really didn't know a lot about cells at that point. And in response to all of his colleagues asking for them, George Guy sent them um, to anyone who wanted to use them for research. And they spread around the world this way really fast. Um, and they were one of the most important things that happened to medicine. They were used to help create the polio vaccine. They went up in the first space missions to see what would happen to human cells in zero gravity. They were used to create our most important cancer medications like vincristine and tamoxifen. Her cells were the first ever cloned. Her genes, some of the first ever mapped. Um, they were used to help develop in vitro fertilization. Basically, almost all of the vaccines we take to today can be traced back to research with her cells. There isn't a person out there who hasn't benefited from research on her cells. The surprising tenacity of her cancer cells, which made them so important to medical research, also ultimately took her life. Henrietta Lacks died in October 1951, at the age of 31. As her cells were taken without her knowledge, in an era before the concept of informed consent existed, Henrietta died never knowing how important her cells would be. Even her family didn't learn of the true extent of her legacy until science writer Rebecca Skloot began working with Henrietta's daughter Deborah to uncover the truth almost five decades later. Rebecca, uh, she worked hand in hand uh, with my mother, Deborah Lacks. Um, they went on journeys to Clover, Virginia uh, to talk to family members. They did a lot of work together. Uh, they hit the road a lot. They put a lot of miles on their cars. My mom was uh, two years old when Henrietta passed away. So she never knew her mother. As Deborah learned about these things, she was, there was so much, there's so much mixed emotion in it because on the one hand, look at all this incredible stuff my mother did for science and for the world. That, that gave her a level of peace with her mother's death that she had wanted her entire life. Um, at the same time, there was a lot of anger about um, the fact that everyone has benefited from these cells except her family. This information was out there for so many years and the family was not even aware of, of Henrietta's, um, that they had taken cells from Henrietta Lacks and these cells have been used all over the world by scientists, labs, researchers, and millions, millions of dollars have been made, and you still have the family struggling with basic health care. You know, we gotta recognize the past, but kind of like move forward and and move in a positive direction to to make sure that this doesn't happen again to our family or anybody else's family. And the Lax family is making sure that we continue to move forward to honor and preserve her, her, um, her legacy and speak about her life. So they collaborated with the NIH and formed um, what's known as the Gila Genome Committee, where a few members of the Lacks family and a group of scientists sit on this committee and anyone who wants to do research with the Henrietta's genome um, have to put in an application that is reviewed by members of the family and the NIH um, scientists, there's just, it, it, it was unprecedented. There's never been a moment, a moment like that where research, quote unquote, research subjects 
we're a part of the decision-making mechanism of science. The family now has a seat at the table. So instead of us being the last to know, we will be the first to know. The Immortal Life of Henry Lacks is about so many different things. It's about science and communication and how important it is for scientists to be able to communicate with the public. It's a story about journalism. What happens when people tell your story? It's, a, it, it's very much a story about race and science and race and medicine. So much of the history of science and medicine was built on the backs of black people without their knowledge. And so it's so important that Henrietta's story be told as part of that history. And in some ways that, that's the concept behind Black Lives Matter, is saying, yeah, this black life matters. And it matters that we talk about it and it matters that we tell black stories and look at what can happen when we try to kind of squash those stories. It has generations of impact. This year marks the 100th anniversary of Henrietta's birth and her incredible immortal cells continue to be more important than ever. With the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, the HeLa cells were at the forefront of the early research which helped to shape our understanding of the virus. Within the first kind of few days of when we really realized, oh wow, this is a pandemic, this is terrifying. I started getting texts from members of Lax family saying, tell me Henrietta's got this. Like Henry, HeLa cells are working on this, right? You know, and I do think that it, it says a lot about the Lax family that their first response to the pandemic from so many of them was, okay, how is HeLa dealing with this? You know, we know she's got this. <laughs> it just makes me proud because she's not only helping a specific group of people, but she's helping everybody worldwide. She's saving lives. She's giving life. So, I mean, yeah, with these, I say, magical cells. When I do speaking engagements, um, people come up to me and they say, um, I have children because of your grandmother. Um, that's a heartwarming feeling when you know, your grandmother has died, but yet she's still providing life. So for her to know that she is saving and impacting so many lives, uh, she would be she would be smiling from ear to ear. That beautiful smile, that beautiful Henrietta smile, uh, it, 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 it'll light up a room.